Welcome to ChemVid Titrations. So titrations is just a name for when you take an acid and a base and you use one to find out the concentration of another. All right. So in context for a titration, go ahead and read over that. Now that you've read over that, you see that titrations can be used in many ways. So the reason why chemistry is needed for so many majors is because chemistry is the foundation for a lot of different things that we use all over the place. Um, detectives use it, nurses use it, doctors use it, food and nutrition people use it. A lot of people use chemistry. And one of the reasons why is it's so applicable to everything. So titrations are used to look and see how much of a concentration of H plus or OH there is in a solution. Down here it explains what a titration is and the steps for a titration, the procedure. So make sure you read through that, understand what's going on, and you know those steps because I'm not going to give you the procedure. I'm just going to say do a titration and you need to know what's going on. All right, so let's jump in with our first example. Sample problem number one. A volume of 24.73 milliliters of 0.3 molar NaOH neutralizes 10 milliliters of an unknown concentration of HCl. What is the concentration of HCl? So the way a titration works is in your burette, that's this tall um, glass piece, and it just holds liquid. It's kind of like a graduated cylinder, only really long. And up here is where you put your known. So in our sample problem, it says, I know the concentration of NaOH. So my base goes up here because I know the concentration. It's 0 0.03. Then down here in your flask, this is where your unknown goes, the one that you're trying to find the concentration for. So in this case, in this example, it's my HCl because I don't know the concentration of HCl. So for a titration, you can either have a base in the top or an acid. It's just whichever one you know. And then on the bottom, it's the opposite one, the base or the acid, and it's the one you don't know. I think I said that wrong. Known on top, unknown on bottom. That's how it works. So... The nice thing about bases is that they contain OH ions. So in this lovely little burette, I have a lot of OH ions going into my burette, and they're just hanging around in some kind of solution. Whereas down here in my unknown, I have, where is my marker? There we go. I have a certain number of hydrogen ions floating around. However, I'm not sure how many of them I have. I don't know the concentration. The way a titration works is that we take our known NaOH and we start dropping the OHs down into our unknown. So I'm going to take my OH and I'm going to drop it down there and it's going to go into my acid. And what happens? when you have an OH minus plus a hydrogen ion. What does that create? It creates water, H2O. And as you know, H2O is neutral. So if I were to drop five OHs into my titration, and the solution was neutral after I dropped five OHs, how many H pluses had to be in there in order for it to be neutral? The answer is five. Because in order for something to be neutral, my OHs and my hydrogens must be the same. So that's how a titration works. You drop a known amount of OHs or H pluses down into your solution, you stop when the solution is neutral, and therefore you know how many hydrogens there are in your solution, and then you can calculate the concentration. So let's see how this works. So in my problem, it says that I took 24.73 milliliters of NaOH, and I dropped it into my 
container, my flask, that has 10 milliliters of acid. And we know that my OH ions have to equal my H+. Plus. So I stop my titration once this guy was neutral. So the way that we do this is we use phenolphthalein, that indicator. And so right now this solution would be clear. And once it becomes neutral, it's going to change to a very, 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 very light purple. All right, sorry, that's so scrunched. And that's when I know to stop my titration, when the indicator says you've reached it, they're equal, don't go anymore, okay? So I need to know how many OH ions I dropped into my unknown solution. So if I look at here, I see molarity, and molarity, as you recall, is moles per liter. So in this case, molarity is moles of NaOH over liters of solution. Now, take a little memory roll back. What happens when you add, put NaOH into, a, into water? It breaks apart into sodium and hydroxide ions. And we know that if I have 0 0.03 molar NaOH, that means I have 0 0.03 molar OH. So I'm going to come back over to my equation, and I'm going to get rid of the NaOH, and I'm going to replace it with hydroxide, because I know that a strong base is going to separate completely, so it's got the same molarity, and so now I can solve for my moles of hydroxide, which is what I want, because I want to know how many hydroxides I have. So I'm going to take my molarity, which is 0 0.03 times my liters. So I'm going to have to convert this to milliliters. And so I move that guy over by three decimal points. And when I put that in, I get moles of 7.419 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of OH minus. All right? So finding the amount of moles of, N of OH is simple. You take your molarity times your volume, and that gives you your moles. We're going to use our molarity concentration. All right? Now, now that I know the moles of OH, I know that my OH has to equal my H plus. So if you look over in our notes, we've determined the moles of OH right here. That's what we did. I kind of skipped step one, but we need to go back to it. So write the balanced chemical equation. If I have NaOH plus HCl, I'm going to make sodium chloride plus water. So I make my water and my salt. Everything's balanced. And if you notice, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every acid I have, I have an equal amount of hydroxide. So that means that I am going to have 7.419 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of hydrogen ions. Because HCl is going to break apart just like NaOH. So now I know how many hydrogen ions there are in my solution. So just to recap, what we did was we found out how many moles of hydroxide there were by using the molarity and the liters that I used to titrate. I stopped when my solution was neutral, so I knew that my hydrogen and my hydroxides had to be equal. I looked at my balance of chemical equation and I found out that this guy is one to one ratio. My acid and base is a one to one ratio. So therefore, my acid must be the same amount as my hydroxide. All right, now that I know how much my um, hydrogen I have, I can solve for the concentration. So the final step number four is asking me to calculate the molarity of my unknown, of my HCl. So molarity is equal to moles over liters. I now know my moles of hydrogen, so that guy goes here. Divided by, I look back at my equation and it said I need, had 10 milliliters 
of my unknown HCl. So I'm going to put in 0 0.01 liters. And when I do 7.419 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 0 0.01, I get a concentration of 0 0.07419 molar or, oops, it's supposed to be a point, <laughs> or 0 0.07 molar with proper sig figs. That is how you calculate a concentration of an acid or a base using a titration. Now I know you guys like to save a little bit of time, so I want you to introduce this equation. It looks a lot like our dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. That's because it's a very similar setup that we're doing. So the molarity of your acid times the volume of your acid equals the molarity of your base times the volume of your base. But here's the caveat, and here's the thing you have to remember. This equation only works if the ratio between your acid and your base is 1 to 1. So before you use this equation, you must write out the balanced chemical equation first and check your ratio. So if I look at problem number one over here, it says I'm mixing, oh, sodium hydroxide and HCl. From our chemical balanced chemical equation, I can see this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so I can use this equation to save me some time. So instead of going through and calculating all the moles and things like we did last time, I'm just going to plug my um, numbers in. So a volume of 32.7 milliliters of 0 0.04 molar NaOH. So that's the other side of my equation. So my molarity is 0 0.041 molar times my concentration is, or my volume is 32.75 milliliters. And then it says neutralizes a 18 18 milliliter acid, okay? So I'm solving for my molarity, that's what they want. So I'm gonna take 0 0.041 molar times 32.75. I'm gonna divide by 18 milliliters. My milliliters cancel out, I'm left with molarity. And the molarity of my acid is equal to, wait for it, 0 0.073 molar. So as you can see, this lovely little equation saves you a lot of time, but can only be used when it's a ratio of 1 to 1. All right? Only 1 to 1. Okay, let's try another one. So let's look at number 6. A volume of 20 milliliters of 0.25 molar aluminum hydroxide neutralizes 75.02 milliliters sample of H2SO4. What is the concentration of H2SO4? So the very first thing I do is I write my balanced chemical equation, and I look at the ratio of my acid to my base. So if I look, my base is 2, my acid is 3. That means I cannot use the MAVA equals NBVB. I cannot use that shortcut, so I'm going to have to do it the long way, which means I'm going to need to find out my moles of hydroxide, then I can switch that over to moles of hydrogen, and then I can switch that over to concentration. So first things first, molarity of my base times liters of my base will give me moles of my base. So now that I have the moles of my base, I know that if it's neutralized, the moles of my base have to equal the moles of my acid. The only problem is, is that my base gives off two hydroxides for every um, acid that gives off three hydroxides. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio like we've done before. So I need to take that into account and do 0 0.005 moles of hydroxide. And then I'm going to put two moles of hydroxide on bottom for every three moles of hydrogen, because that's my molar ratio. I'm going from moles of hydroxide to moles of hydrogen. And that gives me 0 0.0075 moles of hydrogen. So now I take my moles of hydrogen divided by my liters of hydrogen, which was the 75 milliliters, and I get a molarity of 1 times 10 to the negative 1. So here's a sum up of what we did. Please finish the examples, and we'll talk about this more in class.
Thank you very much.